A long time ago, in a small coal mining town in West Virginia, I played football with a group of outstanding men under the guidance of a tremendous coach. I was 12 years old. Recently, I was talking to a friend whose kid had played in a soccer game, and I asked innocently who won. To my surprise, I learned they don't keep score. That way, there are no losers. Everybody's a winner. That hasn't been my experience in life. And that certainly wasn't my experience as a young person playing football. We kept score. Don't misunderstand me. I don't think my friend's kid should be some maniac competitor at the age of five. Frankly, I'm just glad they're getting him involved in sports. But thinking about winning and losing stirred up a lot of memories about my old football team. Our coach had stuck with the team for years, long after his own son had grown up and moved on to high school. We learned a lot from him, and not just about football. Although we learned a lot about football, a whole lot. He was a dedicated student of the game and a great strategist, and we often prevailed against bigger teams from bigger towns because our playbook was so diverse. He believed that fundamentals and conditioning were critical to winning, and we never stopped working on either. We could run, we could block, we could tackle. We delivered punishment. That didn't so much come from him. That just came naturally to us. In hindsight, however, I've come to realize that what he did best, what he did that made us winners, was pretty simple. He expected things of us. And his expectations were high. And we loved him for it. For all that, he wasn't a win-at-all-costs kind of guy. I remember one time this kid came out for the team. He was too young, way too little. But he was eager to play. We knew it was just a matter of time before he was going to get hurt. And he did. He was laying there on the ground, whimpering, cradling his hand, desperate for a sympathetic word. But we were a wolf pack, ready to turn on our own. Besides, what if that weakness was contagious? Our team had an old school bus that our coach used to drive us to and from practice, picking us up and dropping us off at our homes. And that day was no different. He stopped the bus at the little kid's house, got off, and took the boy up to the front door to speak to his mother. When he got back on the bus, Someone snickered, and he tore into us. That's how he was. His personal code of honor wouldn't allow for bullying, wouldn't allow for racism, which was unusual for that time and place, and expected the same honorable behavior from his players. For a lot of us on the team, that fall was the beginning of our time in junior high, which is, in a lot of ways, one of the most intense periods of your life. The friends you make in junior high tend to remain your friends forever. And it makes sense when you consider how much change you're all experiencing. Changes in the way you look, changes in the way you talk, changes in the way you look at girls. And in that particular fall, there was another unexpected change coming. Sunday was game day, which usually meant we got out of church and I got to sleep in. When my parents came in to talk to me, I thought maybe I was dreaming. I had no experience with death. I even had a couple great-grandparents still living. There was no way, no way Coach could have died. Only there was. I didn't want to go up there. I didn't want to see him like that. 
That would make it real. And it occurred to me that growing up was probably going to mean losing as much as winning. We didn't practice for several days. I wasn't even sure I wanted to go back. But eventually our assistant coach, who was also a great guy, took over as head coach. Honestly, he was as damaged as we were. Practices sucked. And personally, I was dreading Sunday. Game day was usually a real rush. But this time we were all pretty much just numb. We took the field like sleepwalkers. Or maybe that was just me. I guess Coach saw something slipping in their defense because he sent in a particular play. I was no great athlete. I was just a scrawny little kid. And for some reason, they'd made me a guard. And this play they sent in called for me to pull and run as a lead blocker for our quarterback. field and it all gets real quiet like I'm underwater and I'm running and running and I feel like I'm gonna puke the only sound I can hear is my own breathing and then I can hear the breathing of my friend the quarterback almost like he's riding on my shoulders and all that's between us and the end zone is this kid and I can hear my quarterback it's like he's whispering in my ear Kill him. Kill him. And I tried to. I hit him harder than I'd ever hit anyone in my life. And what I remember vividly is that the moment I hit the kid, I heard him start to cry. And I thought, geez, I must have really hurt him. But then I realized he wasn't crying. I was. And I saw my friend was crying too. I wish I could remember what we said to each other. Maybe we didn't say anything. I don't know. What I do know is that one by one, we all took what we were feeling and channeled it into the game. Those poor kids, they never stood a chance. See, I think they understood what was happening and offered themselves up as a sacrifice to our explosive adolescent rage. That day we left nothing on the field except a lot of the anger we felt at coaches passing. We weren't the same kids when it was over, that's for sure. It would be great to tell you that we regrouped and made a run at the championship and won on a last second field goal like in the movies. But that's not what happened. As I recall, we split the rest of our games and missed the playoffs. Maybe today's conventional wisdom is right. 
Maybe we should all see ourselves as winners. But the truth is, we're gonna lose in life too. It's inevitable. When he was alive, our coach prepared us as players and as human beings. And because of who he was, even now, after all these years, all these decades, even in death, he's still preparing us. Anyway, I'm just telling you a story, a true story, about something that happened to my teammates and me a long time ago. <laughs>